something weird just happened. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Uh, today we're listening to Deep Purple with their song Into the Fire. This is off of their album Deep Purple in Rock released in 1970. A few of you all had recommended this song and a lot of you all <laughs> seemingly enjoyed the last song we did from Deep Purple Child in Time. So I figured why not revisit them? Why not come back? Uh, listen to a little bit more. Okay, so the weirdest thing just happened. When I'm doing a session in here and I'm listening to my music, pretty much like after every one or two songs, I go out really quick, talk to the wife, kind of look around, kind of do some stuff, and then I come back and I, you know, listen to some more music. All right, so as I was leaving from the last video I just did, I saw something moving on the bottom corner, <laughs> like a worm or something, and I was like, that's not, that's not a worm. There was a little baby snake just hanging out, just, just slithering around. Now, I like snakes, so I just picked them up and put them in the lawn, but how random. Like, like that's the most random thing that could have happened. A baby snake was just slithering against the wall, and my cat apparently didn't even see it, so, you know, that's that's fine. Hope you guys have no snakes in your house. You can join me on Twitter. You can join me in the comments down below, also on Patreon if you'd like to support the channel. But uh, let's, let's jump into the song. This is Deep Purple with Into the Fire.
that was just big. That was just huge. <laughs> the music felt like a, a dinosaur. I was going to say a giant dinosaur. I know there's smaller dinosaurs, but let's just say a giant dinosaur. Let's say a brontosaurus. It's just like stomping. <laughs> and I think what made it incredibly heavy was just the way that all of them were playing pretty much on top of each other. Like with the, the organ, the bass, the guitar, they, the drums, they were just stomping and hitting everything at the same time. Uh, that was really cool, just doubling up on one another. And that's what made this song feel like you were stepping into the fire. Uh, very, very close to getting a little, just a little bit of burn. Ian Gillen, not Gillian. I know I misread last time because sometimes I'm looking at the screen and I don't know how to read, but Ian Gillen. Uh, once again, we get a nice showcase of his vocals because it's really his singing that's kind of the melodic lead throughout those really heavy stomping moments uh, throughout the song. I, I don't feel like this song was as, uh, for me, personally interesting as Child in Time, but I also feel like this was a really solid heavy hitter and showstopper uh, that, you know, I enjoy. And it's a perfect length, actually. Three minutes and 30 seconds for a song like this for me is perfect because it's repetitive. It's a good riff, but it's repetitive. There's not a ton of diversity within it, but they had a good idea and they stuck with it for the right amount of time for me. So uh, I guess this is a yes in my book. <laughs> I love that though. You gotta admit, that's, that's a swinging riff. That feels like taking the huge hammer, the sledgehammer, and just like, <laughs> just breaking some rocks. <laughs> I do like how the organ is just kind of faintly and yet presently there, uh, providing a little extra kind of heaviness, a different type of heaviness, because organ is a heavy instrument, you know? I think that even when it's played lightly, it's a pretty heavy instrument. So that's really cool how you can hear that faintly uh, beneath all the fuzz and the buzz of the guitar and the bass. And even the vocal lines just hit perfectly right with that riff. It's, it feels so weighty, and I guess for lack of a better word, it feels so heavy. Just the weight that it bounces on those riffs just at the right time. Bum, bum, bum. Like, yeah. Yeah, come on. <laughs> and the music, and the musicians do a great job of building up the mountain and then bringing down the mountain, bringing an avalanche down. That's really cool. This is an intense song through and through. We got a nice drum fill there. Uh, coming in by in pace. I mean, like I said, this is a perfect three and a half minute song. You get in, it's a really awesome trip, and you get out. And I'm just looking at the track listing just to get an idea. Uh, this is the second song I'm on side two, and the first song, Flight of the Rat, is seven minutes, 51 seconds. So I would imagine that's more akin to a progressive light song like Child in Time. So this is a really quick and nice in and out intense song after a longer song like that to just kind of like have a little bit of a break, as intense of a break as that may be. <laughs> so uh, let's pull up the lyrics for this one. There weren't a ton. Take the trouble to decide the things you do will not be the things that don't appeal to you. See the mess you're making, can't see you're faking, going to make it hard for you, you're going to into the fire. Turn on to the mandrake that was given to you. See if you can make it like the others do. Feel the blood and knocking when your finger popping. Going to make it hard for you. You're going into the fire. Okay, so he's saying going to, going to make it hard for you. You're going into the fire. Almost like a cautionary uh, statement. You know, you're, you're going too hard. You're going into the fire. Um, perhaps your lifestyle is, is too dangerous in some capacity. You're doing something that you're getting too close to the, that edge and you're, you know, you're getting close to that fire and you're going to burn yourself. So doing something that's harmful, uh, at, or at least going to be harmful at some point, perhaps to the point of no return, you know? I don't know exactly what that thing may be, but even in the first verse, he gives a little advice. He says, take the trouble to decide the things you do. Like, think about what you're going to do before you do it. Uh, but, but following that, he says, will not be the things that don't appeal to you says here on Wikipedia, which I see was also referencing the, I guess, actual CD pamphlet, uh, but it says, Into the Fire was written by Glover as a warning against drugs. The main riff developed after discussing chromatic scales with Blackmore. Well, I don't know anything about that, but <laughs> so that makes sense. You know, you're going too far, perhaps with drugs uh, at some point, you know, you're going to get burned. It may feel good right now. It may not really be affecting you and the people around you too badly right now, but at a certain point, you're going to cross the line and it's not going to be a good time for you or anyone uh, in your vicinity. 
And then at the end, he says, stop your bleeding mind before it's over and done. Listen very closely to the message I've sung. I like that. Stop your bleeding mind before it's over and done. If you're injured, one of the first things they have to do is stop the bleeding. If you bleed out, you die. I mean, <laughs> that's it, you know? So stop your bleeding mind. You're going down this path and you may not realize it, but in a sense, you have internal bleeding. We all see it, but you don't see it. So don't go down this path anymore. Stop the bleeding. Uh, listen to very closely to this message I've sung. Great song. Nice, intense, heavy. It's just big. <laughs> you guys can let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. I hope you're having a wonderful day, guys. A beautiful morning. I'll, I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.